before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. This is family night, isn't it? Mothers, bring your daughters. Fathers, bring your sons. And let us worship the Lord together. I tell you all the time, serving the Lord should be a family affair. Amen. It's so good to be here. Come on, clap your hands and let's thank God for everything that has gone forth to the glory and to the honor of the Lord. Maybe you didn't get a chance to testify tonight. You didn't do. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. But God's been good to you nonetheless. Why don't you take a moment, go spread the love of the Lord to somebody, shake a hand, hug somebody, tell them you love them with the love of God. Come on. Oh, that's it. Hallelujah. Oh, bless it. That's it. And by this shall all men know. That you're my disciples by the love you have one for the other. Oh, that's it from the least to the greatest. Come on. Say the Jesus in me. Bless you. Love the Jesus. Bless you. The Jesus. Bless you. Yo. That's it. Your reason. Yes, you are your reason. Say the Jesus in me loves the Jesus. The Jesus loves the Jesus. Oh, oh. Yes, you are your easy. Yes, you are your easy. Easy to love. One more time, help me. Say the Jesus in me loves the Jesus. The Jesus loves the Jesus. Oh yeah. You're easy. Don't get lazy. You're easy. You're easy to love. Hands with me. Hey, everybody, come on. I love you. Come on, put those hands together, everybody. All right. I feel the love. Thank you so much. <laughs> hey, oh. Lord, have mercy. Stay right there. Put your hands together. Yes, sir. Come on and clap your hands, everybody. Hey, you're my brother. You're my sister. When I'm praying for you, yes, you are your reason. Yes, you are your reason. Yes, you are your reason. Everybody. Amen. God bless you. Take your seat if you can. And on your way down, touch somebody. Tell them I love you. And I'm praying for you. Amen. Want you to know it. I love you. And I am indeed praying for you. 
Amen. Praying for your family. Praying for your mind. Amen. I'm praying that every good thing would find its way to you. I'm so glad to be here tonight. Amen. Now, I know we usually have our solo of your own choice, but tonight, can we just get into the word? Amen. You can sing a psalm or a hymn or a spiritual song on your way to the house. Amen. But we're going to get right into the word tonight. Is that all right? Amen. Everything else is going down but the word of the Lord. As a matter of fact, look at somebody and tell them there is a word from the Lord. Oh, and tell them that I'm a lover of the word. Now, I trust that you brought that word with you. You got it? Come on, hold that power up tonight. Thank God. Amen. I just told you everything else is going down but the word. You got to believe that. Amen. You got to know that it's not just one of those church cliches. Everything else really is futile. It's terrible to put your trust in anything. Amen. Besides the word of the Lord. Can I tell you, people will fail you. And a lot of times, you know, people are so quick to use that word lie. You just lied. You just lied. Listen, sometimes people honestly intended to do what they said they were going to do. They had the will, but somewhere along the line, they found out they didn't have the power. Amen. So don't be so quick to tell people they lied to you. Sometimes they really meant it when they said it. Just didn't have the ability to pull it off. Amen. Uh, but now people will fail you. The Bible says it's a dangerous thing to trust in a man whose breath is only in his nostril. You realize uh, you putting your trust in somebody who the breath they taking right now could very well be the last one they ever take. You can't put your trust in people. You can only put your trust in God and in what God has said. That's why the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing how by the word of the Lord. Then he says the just shall do what? Live by faith. Now, if faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord, and if the just have to live by faith, that means our hope, our faith, our trust must be in what he said. If he didn't say it, then you can hope all day long. The only thing you can put your faith in is what he has said. And so many people now are believing God to do stuff he never said he would do. Y'all getting quiet on me here tonight. Amen. But our faith must be rooted in every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. The book of Leviticus, the 20th chapter. Amen. Leviticus chapter number 20. And I want to call your attention to... Amen. The seventh and the eighth verse. Leviticus chapter number 20, verse 7 and verse number 8. And then I want to call your attention to 2 Corinthians, the sixth chapter and the 17th verse. And then I want to call your attention to Romans 12 verse 1 and verse 2. Leviticus 20 and verse number 7. When you have it, say amen. amen. Read what the Bible says, 7 and 8. Sanctify yourselves, therefore. He says, sanctify yourselves, therefore. And be ye holy. And be ye holy. Somebody say holy. holy. Uh-huh. For I am the Lord your God. For I am the Lord your God. Sanctify yourself and be holy. For I am the Lord your God. And if we serve a holy God, that means a holy God requires what? A what? A holy people. Sanctify yourselves and be holy. For I am the Lord your God and that's the kind of life that's the kind of lifestyle that's the kind of requirement that our God has of us if you were serving somebody else then maybe you could be a shyster 
But if you're going to serve the true and living God, you've got to sanctify yourself and be holy. Are y'all listening to me tonight? So many times people want you to believe that you can serve God on your own terms, and that's not the case. The Bible does say, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. But that don't mean that you're coming to the bargaining table where you say to God, I'm willing to do this, or I'm not willing to do that. I'll walk away from this, but now it's just too much for you to ask me to leave this or to come out of this or to stop doing that. No, when you come to the table of reasoning, that's God's opportunity to show you the sensibility of serving the Lord. Amen. That's not the time for you to look at God and say, listen, you ought to be glad that I came Sunday, but if you keep giving this man them kind of messages, I ain't coming back. Listen, God don't need none of Can I talk to you tonight? God don't need any of us. He loves us. He desires, amen, that we should not perish, but that we should come to repentance, but it's not because God can't live without us. He's been here since eternity, and you just 47 years old. He's already proven he can exist without you. The reality is you just can't exist without him. And so we don't come to God saying to God what we will do because he is God. And so he says, what I need you to do, I need you to clean yourself up. I need you to sanctify. I need you to come apart and be holy because your God is holy. Read. And ye shall keep my statutes. And then he said, you will keep my statutes. And do them. And you're going to do them. I am the Lord. Because I am the Lord. Which sanctify you. I'm the Lord that sanctifies you. Are you hearing what he's saying? I'm the Lord that sanctifies you. Well, I thought he just told me to sanctify myself. He did. The Bible says, sanctify yourselves, and then the very God of peace will sanctify you wholly. He will sanctify you completely. Are y'all hearing me? That means that there is something that God requires of you to do in the process. I'm tired of people preaching a do-nothing gospel. Amen. Well, you can come to God, and you don't have to do anything. Lord, preach have made church folk as lazy as they have ever been. Amen. Now you don't have to come to church. You don't even have to pray for yourself. Just call. Amen. And just tell everybody else to pray for you. Just call your prayer partner. Give them your list. Have them fast for you while you sitting up at Jack in the Box. Y'all ain't saying nothing. How could I preach today? Amen. You've got a part that you must play as well. Amen. He's not saying that you're going to come to God and God's going to do it all for you. No, there is a part that you've got to play. And what is that part, Apostle? I'll tell you, the things that you can do, God expects for you to do it. Uh-huh. I don't care how quiet y'all get, I'm going to preach till I get done. Amen. The things that you can do, God expects for you to do that. If you know God delivered you and you don't sniff cocaine no more, if you got saved tonight and you got an eight ball in your dresser drawer, when you get home, amen, God ain't going to go there and take that thing out of that drawer for you. Amen. That's up to y'all getting quiet here. Amen. There was a time when people got saved. They understood that because I'm saved now there are some things that I can't do now that I'm on the Lord's side and I don't care I've had people that got saved Sunday morning amen after church they brought me the rest of the cigarettes and said preacher I don't need these anymore so y'all getting quiet y'all remember amen folk running up here throwing cigarettes amen saying I don't smoke these I don't want these anymore that's somebody that understands amen that God's not going to do it all and brothers and sisters Hey man, if you know something is wrong, stop trying to lay out this fleece before God and say, God, if you don't want me to wear it, then don't let it be in the closet when I get home today. Oh, no. God said, no, you're going to show me how much you intend to serve me. Hey Amen. Because if you get saved and sanctified, there are some things that you will realize are not like God. And I don't care if you just got saved a week ago. The Holy Ghost is going to quicken you and let you know that now that you belong to God, God, everything is not acceptable. And anytime anybody would dare to preach a gospel to you,
you that does not require change of you that's somebody that's lying listen oh I know the Bible said if any man is in Christ he's got to be a new creature all things must pass away your old attitude y'all ain't saying nothing your old friends gonna leave you the old way you used to dress is gonna change are y'all hearing what I'm trying to tell you because you know before you got saved the devil told you you were fine oh I got it you were dressing to please men but God said when you get saved I'm the only one you gotta be worried about pleasing and so it's not about me looking fly or y'all ain't saying nothing it's about me looking holy can I talk to somebody up in here it means something to know that you are on the Lord's side uh, and so he said no you got to sanctify yourself and be holy and he said I am the one that sanctifies you that means I'm the one that completes the process uh, after you have done what you can do then God said now I'll come in and do the stuff that you cannot do are y'all hearing what I'm trying to tell you I don't care if you were the playboy before you got saved when you get the Holy Ghost you gotta go through that phone are y'all hearing what I'm trying to to tell you and you gotta erase them numbers y'all ain't talking to me here tonight oh god because now that you save uh, you know them calls you uh, them numbers you got uh, that ain't got no letters by it just got emojis uh, oh y'all ain't saying and look at y'all getting quiet because uh, you don't want nobody to know who that is uh, lying got pizza hut in your phone you know that ain't pizza hut that's a booty call uh, could i preach to somebody up in here when you get saved and sanctified you got to come on out of that old lifestyle. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. You got to come on out of that kind of sin and sanctify yourself. Ain't no need y'all looking at me like that. Second Corinthians 6 and 17. Wherefore? Wherefore? Come out from among them. Come out from among them. And be ye separate. Come out from among them. And be ye separate. Says the preacher who's trying to ruin your fun. I don't know why people think the preacher is the enemy of a good life. See, the way he preaching that kind of stuff, I'm telling you, it's a wonder they got as many folk as they got. See, I stopped letting the devil talk to me years ago. You know, the devil will lie to you and tell you, if you just stop preaching that kind of stuff, then maybe you can get more members. Well, first of all, we ain't after members over here. We want sons and daughters. There's a difference between being a member and being a son. And second of all, I know he lying because I know folk that don't preach nothing and they still ain't got nobody. He said, you've got to come out from among them. Touch somebody again and tell them there's a difference between us and them. Y'all think y'all better than everybody. No, we just think we're different. He said in the book of Amos, the third chapter, and the third verse, he said that two cannot walk together except what? Except they agree. Amos 3 and 3. You cannot walk together except you agree. That's why the Bible said you can't be in God and be in the world. You can't love God and love the world. You can't serve God and serve the world. You can't have fellowship with light and fellowship with darkness at the same time. There are some things that are opposed to each other diametrically. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. There are some things that just don't 
don't go together. I don't care. You can lock the doors. You can uh, let down the curtains. Hey, man, you can do all that you can do and flip a light switch on. Light is going to find a way in this place and darkness is going to find its way out. You'll never go into a room, flip a switch, and half the room is dark and half the room is light. They cannot cohabit the same space. And that's the way it is. Some of us are just scared to trust God fully because we haven't learned yet the futility of that old life that we used to live. Amen. When you understand that that step wasn't going to yield anything to you, it was just wasting your time, then you will realize that I don't have that kind of time to waste. So I'll come out of that and I'll come over on the Lord's side, but we get in trouble when we try to have it all. Are y'all hearing what I'm trying to tell you? They used to tell us that you can't have your cake and eat it too. I ain't never figured that out. Amen. But it sounded good when they said it. But now we want our cake. We want our pie. We want two scoops of ice cream on the side. And we don't want nobody to tell us what we cannot have. But you've got to understand there are some things that just don't go together. And the Bible said for the believer, evil communications will corrupt your good manners. You know what that means? That means that the more you hang around people that don't support your spiritual goals and desires, you're going to start acting like them instead of acting like us. Uh-huh. You're going to start talking like them. See, that, that, that's why church folk have to surround themselves with church folk. Y'all getting quiet. I don't, I don't understand church folks. Child, I feel more comfortable around sinners than I do them folk I go to church with. That's because you one of them. Are y'all hearing what I'm trying to tell you? The Bible said if you're walking together, it's because you agree. I got family members I don't agree with. Y'all getting quiet. See, See, this is that kind of gospel they say dividing folk. No, listen, I got family members. I don't go to their house. They don't call me on the phone. I see you a hundred times more than I see some of my family because we don't agree. God ain't never required me to go hang out with dope smokers and alcoholics. Y'all getting quiet here. Hey, man, you are, what did Jesus say? Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? It's the one that does the will of my father. And so he says there are some people you can't walk with. You got to come out from among them and be separate, said the Lord. Isn't that what he said? Give me Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. I beseech you. I'm, I'm earnestly asking you with all gravity. Uh -huh. mercies of God. By the mercies of God. That ye present your bodies. That you would even present your bodies. A living sacrifice. As a living sacrifice. Present your body. He didn't say your heart. He said, I'm asking you to present your bodies. So stop telling me God ain't concerned about this and God ain't concerned about that. He said, present it to God. If God wasn't concerned about it, he wouldn't want it. Well, God, if you don't want me to do it, then make me do it. No, he didn't say, I'm going to make you do anything. He said, present it to me. As a what? As a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Holy. And that, that word holy is again. Holy. Acceptable unto God. And acceptable unto God. Which is your reasonable service. Lord, and that's just your reasonable service. Read. And be not conformed to this and world. And be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, uh -huh. that ye may prove that what ye is, may prove what is that good, that good and acceptable, and that acceptable and perfect, and perfect will of God. Will of God. Just look at somebody and ask them: Is this what sanctification is all about? Amen. Now tell them: Yes, this is what sanctification is all about. So many people talk about the sanctified church. 
And in their mind, the sanctified church was the church where the people shouted, where the people had a drum and, and, and where uh, they had an organ in the church and they would sing those, those hymns. The sanctified church, in, in some people's estimation, uh, was full of people who looked unhappy. People who looked like they were downtrodden. People that looked like they were not enjoying the lives that God had given them to live. But that's not what the sanctified church was. The sanctified church was a church full of sanctified people. People who understood that they had a commission or a mandate from God to love God more than they loved anything else in their lives. Brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, this is what God expects for every one of us. I told you at the beginning of the year, Jesus said, I want you to love the Lord your God. He said, look, there's a commandment and I'm enforcing it and reinforcing it and reiterating it in your hearing. Love the Lord your God with all your soul, your might, uh, your mind and your strength he said and then I want you to learn to love your neighbor as you love yourself now the fact that he would tell us to love God and make this a commandment means that love must be something within my ability to do he would never tell me to love God if loving God was not in my y'all getting quiet here I can't touch somebody and tell them I can love God and if it's the truth tell them I do love him amen loving God is something that we have the ability to do or else he would not have commanded it of us but in that he has commanded that we love God with all of our heart with all of our mind with our soul and with our strength what he's saying to us now is that there is absolutely nothing in the world that should rival the affection that you have for God are y'all hearing what I'm trying to tell you I was talking to somebody a moment ago and I was sharing with him that when it's time to come to church I never have to debate that in my mind you know there's never time that I sit down on a Tuesday and wonder if I'm coming to church Sunday morning it's automatic when y'all getting quiet here I know some of y'all pick and choose which services you're going to go to now I'm going to give them two this week whether it's going to be Sunday and Tuesday or Sunday night and Saturday I'm trying to figure it out but there's never a time when I sit down and try to wonder if I'm coming to church because I have chosen to make God my priority. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying over here on the right hand side? Amen. I'm trying to make God amen my priority. I don't worry about whether I'm going to be here. Amen. Because the only way I'm not coming is if there's some kind of circumstance that keeps me from being in the house of the Lord. Amen but now that's just my priority and when you learn how to make God a priority rather than an option in your life then you'll start to see that God amen will build you to be the person that he has called for you to be but it's when you have all of these other rival affections you're trying to love God but you're trying to love all of this other stuff that's where the problem comes in because then you can't really love him with all all of your heart if half of your heart is still dedicated to that old stuff that you used to do y'all gonna get quiet I'm looking through the building trying to find me a witness here hey man you can't love God with all of your mind if you don't keep your mind stayed on him that's why the Bible tells you hey, that when the enemy tries to erect things in your mind and he's gonna do it from time to time you know the Bible said you have the power to pull down those strongholds or oh, touch them out and tell them the devil is a liar I'm not going to sit up in church and be thinking crazy I'm not going to sit up in my house and be meditating on things that don't please the Lord the devil is a liar and every time the devil tries to stoke up some of those old affections that I used to have I'm going to plead the blood and I'm pulling all of that stuff down the devil is a liar hey man I'm not going to be serving God with half a mind. I'm going to serve him with my whole mind. Y'all, oh God, can I find at least about 17 of y'all? Go help me preach this here tonight. Touch somebody close to you and tell them serve God and bring your mind with you. I'm not going to be sitting up in church debating over whether or not I had 
it better when I was out in the world. Uh, that ain't nobody but the devil. Uh, like there wasn't a reason that you got saved in the first place. Uh, I'm not going to sit up in church uh, and can't lift my hands uh, because I'm worried about everybody that did me dirty. Uh, and I don't know why he up shouting uh, and he owe me money. The devil is a liar. I didn't come to church for money. Uh, I came to church for God. Uh, well, y'all hearing me? Uh, I ain't come to pass no notes. Uh, I came here because there's a real devil uh, on the other side of those doors. Uh, and this is my opportunity uh, to get what I need uh, so that when I go back out there, uh, I can say like Jesus, uh, get thee behind me, Satan. Or oh, I touch somebody uh, and tell them, neighbor, uh, you need power like that. That kind of power comes through a consecrated life. But if you're sitting up and you can't serve God because you're still struggling in your mind, then the devil's going to use your own mind as the hindrance to your progress in God. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. I try to tell them God want to use you. But you got to learn to get control of yourself. You got to learn to remove all of those obstacles to God using you. See, see, some of you really would be good. And the preacher could push you. The only problem is every other month you just about this close to backsliding. I don't know if I'm coming back. Can you pray for me? I don't know why they won't let me teach. I don't know why they won't let me preach. I don't know why they won't let me conduct the service. I don't know why. Because I'm not going to put you up. Y'all ain't saying nothing. If you ain't solid and stable, Lord have mercy. If every other week you talking about backsliding and going somewhere else, then that means you ain't stable. What you going to tell somebody about holding on to God when every time we turn around, you trying to throw in the towel. The devil is a liar. If you're going to serve God, bring your mind with you. And every time the devil tries to bring you to a place of questioning God, of questioning your salvation, all you got to do is have the power enough to say, not today, devil. Oh, somebody say, not today, devil. Hey, Amen. This ain't a good day. And tomorrow ain't looking no better. This is the day the Lord made. I'm too busy rejoicing to try to question whether God can keep me saved or not. So, I gotta make sure that I'm all here. See, see, if you're gonna serve the Lord, you gotta make sure you all here. Amen. Some people their body is here, but their mind is on the other side of town. <laughs> Sitting right up in church and letting the devil battle with you in your mind about backsliding. How the world are you listening to the word of God and, and battling over backsliding while the word is gone? I mean, you really need a touch. But can I tell you how we get to those places? We get to those places when we live undisciplined lives. If you will discipline yourself. See, the only time, y'all getting quiet here. You can develop an appetite for something is when you first had a taste for it. See, got a taste for that. That's fine. But when you get an appetite for it, y'all getting quiet here. See, I done had a taste for a whole lot of stuff. But when I got an appetite for it, I drove two and a half hours for a slice of pound cake. Don't judge me. <laughs> See, if you let the devil start giving you a taste for sin, then it's just a matter of time before you have a... Now, I don't know why. Let me come back over here because it's just a matter of time before you have an appetite for it. And that's why you got to learn how to cut stuff off 
when the devil first bring it to you. I'm talking about sanctification. And you got to learn how to cut that off when the devil first bring that stuff to you. That's why, hey man, if you battling in your mind, that's because you let that rascal talk to you too long. The moment he starts trying to talk, you got to learn right then how to shut the devil up. Because mm, I told you, the longer he talk, the more sense he start to make. And, and when you start saying, I ain't never thought about that, that means you just listen a little too long. And so we got to learn how to stay away from the, what does the Bible say? The Bible said we've got to abstain from the very appearance of evil. Sin. Error, backsliding. We've got to abstain from the very appearance of sin and evil. You know what that means? That means that whatever looks like it would offend God, you stay away from it. Because we're sitting around questioning a whole lot of stuff. I don't know why they tell us we can't do this. I don't know why that man tell us we can't go here. I don't know why he said. See, and the thing about it is, everything in and of itself is not a sin. But he didn't say stay away from sin. He said stay away from the very appearance of it. Are y'all hearing what I'm trying to tell you? Even if it ain't wrong, if it look wrong, or if it makes it convenient for you to do a greater wrong later on, you got to stay away from it. The Bible says a little leaven, leaven it the whole lump. The only way you don't want to be lumpy is you got to keep it all the leaven. Because if you get a little leaven in there, it's going to cause the whole lump. To be leavened. And so when we talk about sanctification, we talk about a life that's set apart. That's the reason why. Because I don't want to start to develop a taste for something that displeases my God. Are y'all hearing me? Because once you have that taste, it's just a matter of time before that taste grows and overtakes you. And now you got an appetite for this stuff. Now you'll get up out your bed going to do some stuff. When you got an app, now I don't need y'all getting quiet because you know I preached straight up through here. When you develop an appetite for stuff, you'll tell everybody you go into the store and go somewhere else to do what you have an appetite. So y'all going to sit here tonight and act like y'all, y'all don't know nothing about appetites. You know what an appetite is. An appetite is that thing that got you getting up in the middle of the night going to that freezer. Waking you up all in your sleep. <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning. You done told yourself, I'm going to stop this. But that appetite hits you and that butter pecan sitting up in that, in that freezer. You don't... You, you got an appetite for it. If it gets you up out of your, and you know you're tired because you're walking with your eyes closed, but you just got this appetite. That's bad. An app, y'all getting quiet. An appetite will pick you up and make you go after stuff that you said, I know good and well, I need to leave this alone. And that's why the sanctified church and sanctified people preach sanctification because we're trying to keep you from developing a taste because we know the devil is never going to leave you with a taste. He's going to keep going until you got an appetite and you'll end up leaving church going to do stuff you know you you ain't got no business doing. You talk about sanctification. He said, listen, sanctify yourself and be holy. You know what holy means? Holy means like God. That's God's standard. So God said, what I want you to do, I want you to live with a standard. And I don't care what nobody says. God don't have any sons and daughters that cannot live within a standard. God don't have no children that are out there just doing whatever they want to do, embarrassing the father. God ain't got no children like that. You know, royalty, they kids are supposed to act different. 
Hey, man, that, that, their children, royal kids, they can't play with everybody. Royal kids got nannies and adjutants and butlers and nurses. And if they see some of them kids on the playground roughhousing around, they come and snatch that little royal boy. <laughs> Pull him back. You come over here because you, you, you can't play with him. They, you can't interact with him. And then when they start to grow, there was a certain standard expected of them. They teach them early which fork to use. We don't want ones holding spoons like this. And I don't know why. Y'all getting quiet. We don't want making noises when we're drinking out of cup. <laughs> Royal kids don't do that kind of stuff. There's a standard that's y'all getting quiet on me here. They'll sit right at the table with the queen and don't say nothing. It's these little snots you got running around, kicking the table and doing all this. Royal kids don't do that. There is a certain behavior that is expected of them. And when you belong to the Lord, there is a certain behavior that God expects out of you. And he ought to be able to expect it out of you. You don't understand. God said you adopted. He done picked you up. Like the old folks say, out of the muck and the miry clay. Set your feet. Watch, watch your voice over there because we'll have some church. Set your feet on a, on a solid rock. Gave you some dignity about you. You remember before you came to the Lord, you abused yourself. That's just how little dignity you had. But look at what God did for you. Touch somebody and tell them you look better than you ever lived now that you saved. You, I mean, tell them you ain't never looked as good as you look now that you say. Tell them you were told up. But no, you were a mess before you got saved. And after God do all of that for you, you're going to turn around and tell him you expect too much. You're just too hard on me. He said, you don't understand. You've been bought with a price. And so because you've been bought, you've been purchased. Lord, have mercy. You go with him. You do what he says to do. And he, hear this now, and he expects you to do it without complaining. This is the, that's why he says, and, 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 and be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then he said, present your bodies, excuse me, as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is just your reasonable. So what are you complaining about? That's the very least that he should be able to expect out of you. And we come to church, especially to, to, to what they have now called the holiness church, because I still believe every church ought to be a holiness church. Folks, you say, I, child, I used to go to one of them holiness churches. I thought all of us were supposed to be holiness churches. But when you go to one of those holiness churches, now everybody got an opinion as to how you live. Those people are too hard on you. But God said, this is just your, your reasonable service. Over there, they, they over there talking about how a woman ain't supposed to cut her hair. <laughs> Ooh, did y'all feel that? Did y'all? I felt like John on the Isle of Patmos. Out here by myself. The Bible said a woman's hair is her glory. Isn't that what the Bible said? Her hair is her glory. That's what the scripture says. But then he said the man is not supposed to have long hair. And he said, nature, teach, touch somebody and tell them there is a natural order of things. 
we, we always talking about the spiritual side. Ah, the spi now, there's a natural order to things. He said nature tells us that it's a shame for man to have long hair. But we so backwards now. The men got hair down their back and the women sitting in the barber's chair saying, can you? Can you line me up? And that poor man can't go to the barber shop and come out in less than two and a half hours because the women sitting in there. I'm next. Can you fade me on, on the side, on this side? Wait. Boy, y'all just leaving me all out here by myself, ain't you? I can't get, I, 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 I would go to that church, but, you know, I heard the first lady over there talking about what women wear and what they, what they don't wear. Well, listen, I believe that if you're holy, you should look holy. The Bible says that. If you notice, when you read the scriptures, Lord, and I'm almost done. When you read the scriptures, the Old Testament, when he brings them out of Egypt, the talking that he did to the children of Israel, all of that talking was in an effort and an attempt to get them to understand that God did not want them to be like every other nation around them. All of the stuff that he said, I don't want you to marry them because if you marry them, you'll start worshiping like they worship. You'll start taking on their values. I don't want you to do this because if you get like them, uh, then you're going to start doing this. I don't want you to get too close to them because if you do, you're going to start to sympathize with them even in their error. He said, I don't want you to go here. I don't want you to serve this. I don't want you to engage in this. Everything that he said, he said because he wanted to keep his people separated from every other nation around them. So why is it that in this last day hour, we're trying to merge and mix with everything? You can't even tell the difference now between church and non-church. Now you know, you even got to be saved to know that this can't be what God intended. God intended for that? For the church that used to be holy. No, 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 no. let me say that the church world that used to pretend the church is still holy. Uh-huh. God, I don't care if he ain't got everybody. He still got somebody. You'll never be left without somebody. And years ago, the, uh, the whole character of the church world was, was, was remarkably different from what we see now. People got up and they preached. I mean, they stuck with the word of God. They were encouraging each other uh, to live a holy. When the minister got up, he was preaching something that would reach down into the hearts of even sinners so that they would come crying, what do I need to do to get it right with God? Or preaching everybody already right with God. I heard somebody saying the other day, the church needs to figure out what it's going to believe. Either he died for the sins of the whole world, either he paid the penalty for sin, or he didn't. You know why they're saying that? Because they still want to feel justified not changing their life and their lifestyle. Boy, now y'all going to get quiet again. I, I just need a few of y'all to, uh, to help me. See, when you don't want to change, then you find a way to justify yourself while you're still doing what you do. That's somebody that ain't really sick of sin. They're still tolerating sin. But when you get sick of sin, you don't want to see that stuff. No, y'all getting quiet. When you really get sick of sin, you want to come out. You want to leave it. You don't want to tell it till we meet again. You want to say goodbye, world. I stay no longer with you. People now are not sick of sin. They still love the pleasures of sin. But they want to benefit from the privileges of the church. And so we want 
our cake, our pie, and two scoops on the side. We don't want to give up nothing. And the only problem is, Jesus said, the only way you're going to really follow me, you got to first deny yourself. So how can we say that we're serving God when that service didn't cost us nothing? Look at somebody and ask them, what did you walk away from when you came to the Lord? Because uh, all come on, ask them, ask them, what, what, what did you walk away from? Because people now ain't walking away from nothing. They just showing up in church now. They still shacking up. Y'all getting quiet. They're still lying. And they just walk in, say a few words, shake the preacher's hand, and now I'm a member of the church and I want to join the deacon's board. But he said, sanctify yourself and be holy. For I am the Lord, your God. This is what sanctification is all about. It is about you pulling yourself away from the world. And hear this, and the things that are in the world. So that God can use you and have free reign in your life. And there are people that are fighting sanctification. You know what? I almost said I think. But let me say I know. God wouldn't tell you to join full gospel. If he didn't expect you to live like we preach. Well, at my last church, uh -uh. <laughs> this ain't your last church. I know God sent me here. For what? To be rebellious? And what gets me, I get letters all the time. From people who say, oh, I love the way God is moving in full gospel. And God ain't just moving in full gospel. God is moving all over the world. But we're on TV, so, so they get a chance to see us. They may not get a chance to see somebody else. But that don't mean that this is the only place God is moving, and I would never say that. Oh, I love the way you can feel the power of God in the atmosphere. You can feel the power of God coming through this computer screen. You can feel the power of God when you walk into the building. We wish we had that in our church. You can. But what God is looking for is a people that are dedicated. Are y'all hearing me? to fulfilling God's will. See, sanctification is saying to God, it's not about me. I put myself on the back burner and everything that I could count as gain, I count it but loss. I'm not going to struggle with nothing when it comes to the Lord. Are y'all hearing me? I told you the Lord said the navy blue was a sin. You think I'm going to argue with God over navy blue? I'm going to tell somebody to give us a song and I'm going to go back there and change this suit. And when I come out, I'm going to have brown. And if he tell me brown is a sin, I'll never wear brown again. I'm not going to argue. Y'all getting quiet here. See, I, I'm not going to argue with God over stuff that's not going to benefit me. No way. How are y'all getting quiet here? I'm just trying to tell you because we represent God, we've got to show the world the holiness of a God that they cannot see. And if we look like the world, if we talk like the world, if we act like the world, then how can they see God in us? This is why he said, I want you to come out come out from among them you come out bring your speech out with you y'all getting quiet 
bring your attitude out with you. Bring your clothes out with you. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He said, come out from among them. And since he separated them from us, that means he expects for there to be a difference. We ought not have the same desire. Listen, I don't believe real church people can listen to all this music now, even the stuff they're trying to call gospel. Real church folk have a problem with this stuff. Because he said, come out from among them. Lord, y'all ain't saying nothing here. He asked a question in the Old Testament book of Psalms. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And I told you, if you can't sing the Lord's song in a strange land, you can't sing a strange song in the Lord's land either. <laughs> Sanctification means I've come away from the things of the world. I come away from anything that looks like the world because I want God to use me. I want to represent God. And we're at a time now when people really don't value this stuff anymore. You know, you got parents who raise their children in church and they ask these kids, what do you want to be? And they don't even encourage these kids to say anything spiritual. Used to be a time when, when, when it meant something uh, 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 for parents who, who, who had children in the church uh, to hear their sons say, I, I want to be like the preacher. But I don't see, look, kids, grow up in church shouting, wanting to be saved, wanting to be this, and, and the parents take them and don't even bring them to church, but have them out on the football field and then try to figure out what happened to them by the time they get 13. They don't even want to come to church no more. What kind of pride? Now, I see y'all getting quiet again. I'm trying to understand what kind of priorities are we setting in our young people? Now, y'all talking. Y'all thinking, child, they still talking like that. They said that back when I was growing up in church. They wouldn't let us do this, wouldn't let us do that. Child, I missed that on a whole lot. Well, you really don't know. It could have saved your life. Uh, 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 you know, I was reading the other day. Somebody said they're not even sure that this was their opinion. They said they, it, they'd be hard-pressed to believe that people still going to be playing football in the NFL in a few years because they're coming out with so many studies about what's this stuff? CTE, is that it? How, how, how your brain wasn't intended to be uh, in a car wreck 16 times during the game. And now folks sit up here uh, going off, they're killing their whole family. Killing themselves. Just, just acting, acting uncontrolled and uncontrollable. Just stoking violence. And then when the preacher says, we're not going to prioritize that. We, we don't value that type. And child, I don't understand why, why they just won't uh, just let them have fun. You, you, I, I'm not saying they can't have fun. I'm just, I'm just telling you. Uh, let me ask you this. Since you put them on the team, <laughs> how many practices have you allowed them to miss? How many games did you just wake up and say, uh, I'm not taking you to that game today? You've never done it. You make sure they had all the practices because if they don't practice, they won't play. You make sure they are at every practice. You make sure they're at every game. How many church services have you let them miss? What are you saying to them? When you won't let them miss a rehearsal. But then you will tell them, no, we're not going tonight. What are you saying to them? What is your priority? Where does God fit? Now y'all done got quiet. Thank you. See me after service. I got a dollar for you. What are you 
you saying to them? What are you teaching them? Now, now listen, ain't no need y'all getting quiet because we ain't changed what we believe in the last 57 years. You knew I believed this. And when they go out there and get their brain scrambled, oh, somebody get a note to the pastor. And he going to send a note right back to you. Why y'all getting quiet? See, the thing is, when consequence happens, we got to understand it's what we chose if that's the decision we made. So I'm supposed to get out of my bed? Because you chose a consequence? Me? I'm supposed to take off and run to your rescue? Me? When I told you up front? See, there was a time when people would say, I want you to be some in God. I, I, I want you. I, I want you to be a, a man of God. Oh, 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 don't you want to be a preacher? We loved it. Bought the little men ties and church shoes. Them little girls came to church with petticoats on. And them little balls they put on the back of them ponytail, kind of you pull and snap. <laughs> we, we, we wanted them to be people that God could use. But now we don't even talk like that. But God said, is there anybody left that just want me to use you? We pushing them towards stuff that if they get in some of that stuff, they ain't never coming back to the Lord. They ain't never coming back. So he said, I want you to understand. I want to use you, but I can't use you unless you're dedicated to me. Some of us are so disappointed if they don't make it because we had plans to move. Child, I'm getting out the hood one day. <laughs> and I was sharing with somebody today. The Bible says, acknowledge the Lord in all your ways. He'll direct your steps. I, I, we were talking before service, me and a couple of people in the office, and I told them I've been... I've been to a lot of different countries around the world. And he said, you went, you wasn't in the army? No, the army didn't take me there. God took me there. When you will sanctify yourself, which means to be set apart for God's use, God will do in you, through you, for you, and to you more than you could ever imagine. Some of you know it. You never thought you would be where you are now. And it's a result of you dedicating your life to the Lord. You tried it on your own, and you didn't make no headway. But soon as you gave your life to the Lord and said, God, I want to live your way. Look at what he did in you. Look, look, at, what, look at what the Lord did for you. On a Tuesday night, you in church? Looking as good as you looking? Cleaned up? Folk ain't running from you because they're scared of you? God worked the work in you. And now, when you out there and folk were running from you because they didn't know whether you were about to tell them to give me your stuff. People will come up to you and say, I know you're a man of God. You must be a woman of God. Don't you know what kind of testimony that is? 
for somebody who don't even know you to walk up to you and say, I know you belong to God. You go to somebody's church. What a testimony. Sanctification is just about you being pulled apart from the world. That world that will drown you. That world that will overtake you. That world that will be your demise. Coming out of something that's trying to kill you and overcome you. And placing yourself in the will of a God that loves you. And that wants to use your life to impact the world. You have no idea what God can do through you. You have no idea how God can use you to impact the whole world. You don't know. That's why he says sanctify yourself. Put yourself in a position or a place for the master's use. The devil want to use you too. And he's using some of them. But God said, will you let me use you? Sanctification set apart for the master's use. Will you let God use you? The only problem is he can't use anything. If he's going to put his hands on a vessel, it must be a clean vessel. It must be a vessel dedicated. You remember who was at Belshazzar went and bought the, 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 the vessels out of the temple of God. And the Bible said he drank wine with the thousand, was it? Out of those sacred vessels. And because he desecrated sacred vessels, the Bible said while he was trying to do profane things with sacred vessels, a hand started writing on the wall. It's a dangerous thing to try to make something profane out of something sacred. It's got to be dedicated to God. If it's dedicated to God, it can't be used for the, for, for, for the sake of the adversary. The devil can't put his hands on this, not when it's been dedicated to God. You can't just use that kind of stuff. God is saying, I need something that's dedicated to me, something that's not going to be used by nobody else. This is, it's not going to be party favors. And they're not just going to say, oh, y'all need a cup to drink out of? Go in there and get them sacred vessels. And just go get them. No, uh -uh. if it's a sacred vessel, it's only used in the service of the Lord. God said, that's what I want you to be. That's why I'm telling you to present your body. As a living sacrifice, you should be a sacred vessel unto God. And if you're a sacred vessel unto God, then Satan cannot have a part in you. Because what if God decides he wants to use you in Walmart? But you in that doing stuff, you ain't got no business doing Looking like you ain't got no business looking and there's somebody there that needs a witness from God and you don't qualify because you claim to be a sacred vessel. What if God decides to use you in the middle of the night? Somebody needs to hear an encouragement. Somebody needs somebody to say something and they can't call you because you laid up with somebody else. When you're sanctified, you're dedicated for his use. And you say to God, whenever, wherever, and however. Don't matter. I'm dedicated to the master's use. God could have really done so much more with so many people. But they weren't dedicated. They found greater pleasure in doing things that didn't benefit them at all. All spiritually. And then when it came down to the things of God, they couldn't find time. Stand to your feet, everybody. I wonder sometimes what God thinks about the service we give him. I wonder sometimes what God thinks about our willingness to come apart. What does God think when we argue? over a standard of holiness. We can read it in the Word. My preacher don't preach that. 
Hey, you know, folk hit me with this one. Well, I don't feel convicted by it. I don't feel like God got a problem with this. What's your feeling got to do with anything? That's like saying I feel black. I don't feel black. Not right now, I don't. Does that change the fact that I'm black? Well, I mean, mocha latte ain't, ain't that dark. It's, it's a, I don't have to feel black to be black. I don't have to feel married to be married. What feeling got to do with anything? It's not about feeling. It's a fact. So when you say, I don't feel like God, what does that mean to God? Because you don't feel like it. That's an emotion. Emotions change. Y'all getting quiet here. So you can't stake your salvation on and, and, and how God's going to use you uh, on how you feel. That's not important. What did he say? There may have been things you love to do. And when you came to God, you found out this stuff, is, it ain't pleasing God. Now you've got to decide, who do I love more? What do I want more? Do I want God to use me? Or do I still want all them compliments I've gotten accustomed to getting from people? Some of us are still holding on to stuff and the only thing we're getting out of it is compliments. There's no spiritual benefit to it at all. But when you will say to God, nothing I have is too good for me to walk away from. You remember that, that young man that came to Jesus? And Jesus said to him, go sell what you have, give it to the poor, and come and follow me, and you'll have treasure in heaven. He walked away grieved. He walked away grieved because the Bible said he had a whole lot of stuff. But then Jesus turns around and says, you know that stuff he walked away from that I told him he had to leave? If he left it, I'd have gave it back to him. I'd have gave him more houses. I'd have gave him a larger parcel of land. I'd have gave him more sisters and more brothers. I'd have gave him mothers and fathers. I would have gave him wealth if he had left what he had. I would have gave it back to him. And sometimes we're arguing over what he's telling us to walk away from as if you don't know. He'll give it back to you. But the fact that you walked away grieved only serves, serve to prove that you held that stuff in a higher regard than even the salvation of your soul. Sometimes God will tell you to walk away from some things. Not so he can figure out what you're going to do, but he wants to do it. He'll tell you that to prove to you the condition of your own heart. You can say, I love you. I'd do anything for you. Walk away from it. I just have a hoe. I don't know why you asked me. He just showed you you didn't really mean what you said. You didn't mean what you said at all. And the fact that he told you to walk away from it, he just said that to show you that you had a whole lot of conversation. But it really wasn't in your heart at all. That's what sanctification is. It's being willing to walk away from that other stuff. And say, whatever he wants me to have, he'll give it to me. He'll give it to me. And I'm not going to cry over that. If he tell me to leave people, and he's told me there were some people I couldn't walk with anymore. I had to walk away from them. It broke my heart. Some of them I've known them all my life. But for where he was calling me to, I, I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't walk with them anymore. And I had to make that decision. I love you. but I got to go with God. And you know what he did for me? 
He turned around and gave me some more people. that were better suited for where he was taking me and what he desired to do in me. Sanctified. Set apart. I had to give up some things. But I showed him I was willing to do it. If it meant holding on to him, if it meant him using me, my highest goal is for God to use me. I was reading one day and they said, ushers, you can come. They said if God called a king off of his throne and told him to go and sweep the floors like a pauper, even sweeping the floors would be a promotion because he would be doing what God called him to do. Every head bowed, every eye closed. There's somebody here tonight. Maybe you thought that all it was was you just coming to church and saying a few things, shaking a preacher's hand, and then that made you everything you needed to be in God. But God is looking for sanctified people who will say to him, it doesn't matter what I have, doesn't matter what I thought characterized my life, doesn't matter what people loved about me or what I loved about myself. If you tell me that it's not in your plan, I'm ready to walk away from it. Somebody tonight needs to come to the Lord. If that's you, I want you to step out of that row, step into that aisle, and make your way to this altar. Tonight, I'm giving it up. Somebody tonight needs to give some up. If you're here, come. I can't make you do anything. I'm here to give you an opportunity. Come on, come on. Somebody else needs to come. Somebody else needs to come. Come on. Oh, Lord, my eyes. Oh, my Come on, they're coming. Come on. Come on. That's it. They're coming. Come on. I walk away from everything for the opportunity to be used by God. Elders, would you come? Come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If there's somebody else, come. I want to be Come on somebody lift those hands up and say Lord I I'm going to do everything that you say, say, do. Use me, Lord. And enable me. Oh, oh, Lord, my.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, that's it. Hallelujah. My will I'll give to you. Jesus, somebody lift your hands and say, and I am, my storage is empty, my storage is hallelujah, my storage I'm available. I am yeah. My storage is My empty. Storage. And I am. I am Somebody say, My storage. My storage. And I To you, oh, my, 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 my storage is empty, oh, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Use me and don't refuse me. Oh, one more time, lift those hands and say, My storage is empty, oh Lord, and I am available to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Take your seat if you can.